talking and asked me a few questions and somebody said is there anybody here make your presence known and you hear a clunk and slide so I automatically turn my flashlight on you can see where a piece of wood had been tossed from the other room and actually slid across the floor at one point we we're upstairs in the ballroom and on one of the side rooms a shadow kind of lunged forward towards me outside of the room the fact that it was built by a 33rd degree mason uh, they usually build buildings to retain energy. Right off the bat, you notice it's, it's almost like somebody's following you. As soon as you step in, you can hear footsteps. The fact that it's cursed is, I don't know if that's the right word. Um, I think it's special, honestly. We've made our way to Cleveland, Ohio to take a closer look at one of the area's most historic locations. Constructed by a 33 degree mason, it said this building was designed with the intent to trap the energy of anyone who walked in it. Over an entire century, this building has seen several things, but at its peak, it was the area's leading funeral home for the African American community. An entire empire was built within these walls, but this family's rise to power would only end in tragedy. Many believe this place is cursed, so we're gonna take the next few hours to find that out for ourselves. This is Resident Undead, the House of Wills. He said, your time will come, everyone's does. The battery's about to die. He's right behind you. He said, you are almost mine. God. So you're, he's, we're not allowed to tell him. A f brick just f collapsed in this room over here. All right, guys, I think I'm good. I feel like I'm going to throw up. Actually, no, not yet. Just hold on. You get your ass down here, down this stairwell. Don't you linger up at the top. You see me? Dude, I just heard that. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I just seen a shadow rope. Hello? Adam, it's a Reaper. Let's get her out of this room. Get her out of this room. Let's out of this room. What's in here? What? 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 What if I told you I found a way to reach back into the past? I got an idea. Our world consists of countless portals that allow us to bridge time and space, each a doorway to a unique past. <coughs> Loyalty is the only code, so I assembled my inner circle to join me. Chris Musgrove. Do it again. Ashley Leckie. No, I'm pissed. <laughs> Ew. And Rebecca Kirschbaum. You can't make deals with things that aren't human. Using a device we call Pandora, it will be our compass as we travel back to the past by creating ripples in time. Shut your mouth. It's time to see what the history books got right. This is Resident Undead. <laughs> the House of Wills. Constructed in the early 1900s as a Masonic Lodge, its structure was designed by a very accomplished local Cleveland architect and Mason of the 33rd degree, Frederick Strybringer. Masons have been known for the energy work they put into buildings, and it's because of that many believe their buildings retain the energy that walks into it. Over the years, that would be put to the test, as the ownership would change several hands. 
These walls would host such things as a Gazeiverein Hall, which housed a social club for German immigrants, a Hungarian Jewish hospital that witnessed a handful of suicides, a speakeasy that served many during the 1920s prohibition, and possibly a church for a short while. Eventually, the ownership would fall into the hands of John Walker Wills, one of Cleveland's most prominent black entrepreneurs who ran a series of funeral homes with his partner under the name of Gene Wills. Together, they laid the groundwork for an empire, but in 1907, their successful partnership would dissolve and John Walker Wills would come out on top taking full control over the business. Now under the new name of Wills and Sons, this family would create the most sought after and successful funeral business within the area for the African American community. All of their hard work and success was rewarded with an unimaginable amount of wealth, and Mr. Wills gave more than his share back to the community that made him. The House of Wills would become a major influence to the civil rights movement in Cleveland due to it being established as headquarters for their meetings. Although it's not confirmed, strong evidence points towards Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. himself visiting the property to attend one of these monthly gatherings. Unfortunately, after a lifetime of accomplishments and at the incredible age of 96, John Walker Wills would pass away of natural causes in his upstairs bedroom suite on April 23, 1971. He was laid to rest at the Lakeview Cemetery. Now many believe the family curse began on the very day he died, and maybe they're right because over the next several years their undeniable success would slowly turn into chaos. The Wills boys were not interested in giving back to the community like their father, but instead they decided to pursue an extremely lavish lifestyle. The establishment quickly gained a reputation as one of the most infamous party spots in all of Cleveland. But it also came with one unique thing that was not seen anywhere else in the city at the time, massive interracial parties. Now, blacks and whites had a safe haven where they could freely mix and mingle. Word of these parties spread like wildfire, each one held would outdo the last. For years, their lawless conduct continued, and their appetite for this lifestyle never wavered. In 2002, one of the sons, Guy Wills III, would meet his own demise. High on cocaine and heroin, Guy entered the Randall Park Mall in North Randall, Ohio, where a police officer suspected him of shoplifting a leather coat. The officer picked him up and threw him headfirst into the concrete floor. Guy's skull was fractured and his brain was left fatally bruised. He would die days later. Patricia Wills, the wife and mother who largely stayed in the shadows, was by Guy's side when he died, and it's most likely his death set her very own demise into motion. The House of Wills would fall into severe disrepair and officially closed its doors in 2005 after a man was fatally shot in a gang-related murder outside on the front porch. But oddly enough, even though the funeral home was no longer in service, Patricia was still taking orders for prepaid funerals, and instead of turning the money over to insurance, she pocketed thousands and fled to Florida. Tonight's investigation will test everything that we are. No electricity, no heat, and we're inside East Cleveland, the city's most dangerous area. For additional security, we'll be joined by our good friends Dan Allen and Ray Goosby. One generator will be our lifeline to wiring this building from top to bottom. If we can survive the next seven hours, this will be one hell of a story to tell. All right, we're beginning our investigation inside the House of Wills. We have a long night ahead of us, and we're just going to hit it running right now. I wanted to get this because you've already been getting really weird vibes. Let's make our way this way over here, and then we're going to have Becca just do a cold read on anything she may feel. All right, let's hit it up this way. Um, sorry. What's wrong? The place is just like it's a lot, suddenly a lot at once. There's a, a man here. Well, I would call him a man. Who has a big hood and he's uh, associated in some way with, with some form of dark magic. Um, this room specifically, there's a woman laying on the ground clawing at it. 
being raped by somebody that she knows. Huh? Sorry. You okay? Yeah, I just saw some a man. <laughs> I, I saw a man step out from behind the curtain. He's obviously there's no man there, and it took me a second to register that it was not physical. He said, "Hello, I'm Charlie. <laughs> nice to meet you." <laughs> uh, we're gonna do an active EVP. Right over here. This was a speakeasy, you know. Yeah. What? That's what he said. The man that just came through the curtains over there. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't, it was, there were white people here. This was a speakeasy at for, one time. Yeah, for white people too. You didn't know any of that. I never showed you any of the history. He just told you that. Please don't feign surprise. Like, obviously. Like, no, you didn't know this was a speakeasy. I never once said today it was a speakeasy. I know. So I'm assuming I'm right. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, Active EVP, whoever's here. All you have to do is talk into this device and we'll hear you in real time. This helps Ashley, Chris, and myself hear you. Becca can hear you already. How about just to confirm what she's saying? Can you say uh, prohibition when I, when I ask you to? On the count of three. One, two, three. Can you say prohibition? MVP, ending. Chris, I'm gonna just play back to yours here real quick. Oh wait, no, I'm playing back to Ashley's. Yeah, that's the big one, okay. I'm just gonna play it, just lean your camera. Oops, lean your camera, face this way. Face your lens this way, okay. This way? No, this way. Are you okay? Yeah, I just don't really feel okay. I mean, I'm f fine. I heard somebody over here. Forgetting at the mirror. Playing it back. Yeah, I think we got it. I really do. I think we got it. We'll have to review that closer, but you guys here first. Uh, what? Uh, man, shotgun blast to the chest. We're in such a violent area that there's a lot of stuff. Do you think he's from here? Or did he just roam here? He's from the vicinity. <laughs> okay. This belonged to Mr. Wills. But vandals got into the building and they ripped out some copper piping. From what we understand from history, I mean, Mr. Wills wasn't a bad man. It was actually his family that made a lot of bad decisions after his death. So, I think, I don't think this is a bad place, personally. We should uh, set you up, Ashley. I, I just think there's a lot of sex in this room. I know. It, it's not that I think this is a bad place. I think this is a bad place. <sighs> Okay, all right. Ooh. What else can you pick though from this room? Like you said, a lot of sex? Sex. So much sex. <laughs> sex and drinking and like sex. All right, let's kill you right here. You can do it. I really hate you. <laughs> you got this. No. 
Remember? No, like, I know I can do it. Like, I know I'm capable. I absolutely, but I don't want to. You're up first tonight, though. Usually you're the, you're the last one to do yeah, it. Yeah, so it, it doesn't first. make a difference. Oh, it doesn't? Okay. No. I'm going to start doing my about. quarantine during the day. A quarantine is the part of the night where each of us will be isolated in one of the location's most highly active areas. The concept is simple. Since we believe some spirits are intimidated by our numbers, this will give them the opportunity to feel less threatened. Ashley will be quarantined in Mr. Will's room. Now we all know he died here and that doesn't mean he's still roaming around, but it's our best start if we're going to find him. With two Pandoras running and 20 minutes on the clock, let's see who she can pull in. Someone's talking shit. Yeah, I'm good. I know, um, I know there's numerous stories about um, deaths here, shootings, I mean, um, suicides. Is there anything that, you, that you're willing to tell me about this? Other than what was just stories, basically rumors. Better be me. Oh god. There's a another woman. Nothing sinister though, just probably making her very uncomfortable. I mean other than the obvious sinister person that's been on the outskirts all night. I was just about to make a joke about the wallpaper, but I'm not gonna do it. Holy shit. Oh. I was super comfortable before and now I'm getting really nervous. Mm. Walk around, show us something. Ew, this woman really is f***ing with it hard. Really? What'd she say? She's just, well, it's very vulgar. She just bent over and pulled her panties off. Is there anyone else in here with me? Apparently, cat's got my tongue. I plan to be super sarcastic and funny, and I am so nervous. Holy shit. Can you tell me anything about the room next to me? Apparently, um, the vibes weren't as good as this room. She's, oh, I thought she was asking for you. She's just gotten really good at talking to dead people. Like, she sounds like she's actually talking to a person. It's pretty good. Our little Ashley's growing up. You guys are the worst friends ever. Oh my God. There's a woman from the speakeasy. I call her that. She's gonna puke. She said, oh, no, she's good. Are you afraid? She's <clears throat> afraid, Charles or Charlie. Or whoever Charlie is. Don't... Okay. That's her favorite. The spirit one. just mocked you though, said, Oh, you're so afraid. Who said that? A woman who had a lot of sex. A woman that did? Confirm. Someone's talking shit. That's what we needed, Ashley. That's what we needed. Yeah, get a little fight in you. Get a little fight in you, Ashley. That is so rude. No, I'm not afraid. I'm sick because this place is kind of scary. But whatever. Ew. Fine, I'll stay. Go ahead. Someone else want to say something? Go ahead.
Oh shit, she just looked in that direction. There's a guy. Oh, don't. What's happening? There's a, um, a hooded man, the hooded man I was telling you about. Yeah. Kind of walked up behind her. Okay, radio, tell her. No. Here, give me it. No. Give me it. Hooded man just walked up behind you. Who did? Hooded man. Oh. Okay, does he have something to say? Do you have something to say, sir? Because those red lights are... Come on, let's talk. What's your story? What's your story? Why are you here? Why are you here? This is about the point where she starts to anxiety starts to build. What'd you see, Becca? I don't know if I could describe it. It's more just like a a, a not formed face in the wall that came out for a minute. Okay, yeah, I'm good now. I'm really, I'm honestly good. Thanks. Come on, friends. We're coming for your extraction. Ashley, we just finished up your quarantine. Yeah. You did good. Thank you. It was so wonderful. That's the enthusiasm we like. <laughs> All right. So, what we're going to do now. We've made our way down to the cloud room. We have a new piece of equipment known as the SB11. It's an upgraded version from the SB7. It's what we use all the time, the spirit box. And Chris has it right here. All right, we have one speaker put into the dual uh, outputs. And what that means is, instead of just having one frequency of FM and AM, we now have com combined FM and AM all together. Here, let's put on this chair here real quick. Or we can have you sit on a chair. And uh, by the way, one cool thing about the cloud room that you're seeing right in here, beautiful ceiling, this is where Mr. Wills used to sell his uh, coffins. Okay, so it is a one of a kind room. We're going to go with the AM FM antenna off. And from now on, we're going to 50 millisecond sweep rate on FM to begin with. On reverse. Okay, we need to know. Is there anybody in this room with us right now? Yes or no? What's the name of the building we're in? Do you want us to leave? You see me! You heard that? You see me! You see me! You see me. Oh wait, it's not. It's not a person. It's a ghost. Yes. You don't know that. Hey Dan, you can come on down, buddy. We're gonna add him in. We're gonna add him in. He's gotta hear this. Yeah. Okay, I'll be right there. All right. You understand we're trying to talk to you. Give me a yes or no. Did someone get shot out on the front steps? Stop it. Stop it. Oh. Hold it, kill it, kill it. Oh. You okay? What's wrong? Oh, I forgot the white noise. Yeah, the white noise really gives her. Yeah, it really gets to her. Oh, yeah? To her head. Yeah. Here, let me see the light. She's crying. Oh, no, she's not crying. Okay, okay. I just can't feel my. It's too much for her. You okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. And we know what happened to you at Saddamsville. Michelle actually said that it may not be the white noise because as soon as. 
He said, did somebody get shot on the steps? And I that's when you said. said pulled you back there? Yeah. Hmm. All right, drama's over. I do, you can. You good? I'm good. Right. Thank you all for loving me so much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. You, sometimes you say you're all right. Yeah. yeah. Let's yeah. stop it there and let's get okay. ready for our first ripple of the night. Okay. Um, yeah, apparently now, now's the right time. Let's do yeah. it. <laughs> Holy shit. Well, let's not. Let's go big for our first <laughs> opera. Let's do it. Let's just go. Uh, Woo! Yeah, we already talked about it. Let's not say it here in case they're listening. Okay. All right. All right, let's do it. A ripple in time is a favorite resident undead strategy used in order to stimulate the dead for maximum interaction. We believe that if you introduce something from their past, they are much more likely to respond to you. Usually, we manipulate known history in order to encourage them to reinforce the truth. But for this ripple, we'll do something completely different. Simultaneously, we will reenact two time periods to see which one is more dominant. Representing the Jewish Hungarian Hospital, Ashley and Dan will be nurse and doctor, while Chris plays a patient brought in with an unknown problem. Just feet away, I will represent the mysterious Freemasons as I initiate a new brother. And as usual, Becca will be sketching anyone or anything we come into contact with. In addition, we'll be joined by special friends of Dark Alley Paranormal, Ray Goosby and Kristen Swartz. With 20 minutes on the clock and two Pandoras running, Let's see who left a bigger imprint. On your knees. We're gonna have a little talk. Do you know why you're here? Oh my god, you have to help me. I don't know what's going on. What happened? What happened? We were walking and I don't understand. All right, let's get him on the table. Come on. All right. There we go. Can you get on the other side, please? Hold up, hold up. Cannot get it to quit flippulating. Scared? You no. shouldn't. You shouldn't be. You shouldn't be. Do you know 
that we are the most elite brotherhood to ever walk this world. Yes. The Masons. The name spreads fear across the land. We would like you to be a part of this brotherhood. Are you willing to go farther? Yes. When he came we're in. We're walking in the park, that's all there was. There's nothing else. He doesn't take anything, he doesn't eat bad. He's healthy. And I he's never done this before. I don't think you're telling us no, the truth. No, he's never done this before. Do you want this guy before. to live? Of course I You've want got to tell live. me the truth. There's nothing wrong with him. Check your pockets. Don't touch my pockets. What's my name? Strybringer. What's my name? Strybringer. I want everyone to hear it. What's my name? Strybringer! Who built this building? You did! I did. You're damn right. You know what? I'm glad you've made it this far. I really like your dedication. Thank you, Mr. Strybringer. That's right. That's right. What's my name again? Strybringer! Good. And with that, you're complete. You're done. I dub you a brother of the Masons. Thank you, Brother Strybringer. I really am interested. What happened? I'm freezing. You're freezing. Besides that, besides that. Come yeah. on. We want the good stuff. Uh, first of all, you did not manage to bring about a mason. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Um, there was a guy here. It's kind of weird because this place is really filled with intelligent spirits. There are some memories that kept like and distracting me, but there are a lot of intelligent spirits. There's this guy. And he has many, many different forms. Um, he looks super scary, I know, but he's cunning and he's kind. At least he appears kind. And he said, you are welcome in my home anytime. Um, he was talking about you. He said, I've been watching him. See, this is you looking through your camera. I've been watching him. He's been promised big things already. I can promise him no additional things. So somebody, you've already made a couple deals. He's like, I got no more deals I can make with you. Um, this did work though. That he, this guy specifically was like, that's not how Masons do their initiation. And I was like, well, yeah, no shit. And then over here, there was a woman who was screaming, no. Like, so an intelligent reaction to his, Do you think, okay. To the de death part. I only saw her for a few minutes. And she said, no, can you hear me? We need help. So she reacted to that. Um, there was a man here um, and he said, ah, oh, the many ways to die. Kind of like a very like grandiose, like welcome to the many ways that you can die. Here's the in another interesting thing that might, this is a safe haven for some spirits, normal human spirits, like the woman who's screaming no, have some sort of refuge here once they're inside the wall. Getting in is next to impossible, and there are these really scary things here that for some reason protect these normal people, or for some reason these people call this place their home, and yet there are these very scary, very dark things, so I don't know. Huh. It's interesting. All right, we just finished our giant ripple. We've sent everyone else up to base. What we're gonna do next We've heard rumors about this subterranean basement down here, and this is just like Alvin's. There's one basement and another. I know it's gonna be around the corner here. We're gonna just take a quick look. Okay. Um, I know we can find it, all right? Insulation all over the floor. This place is decrepit. This is stairwell, that goes back up. Right here, Adam. Here we go. Something there? Yep, wait. wait. Oh shit, yeah it is. You found it? Yeah. It exists. 
What did you say? It's this little door with the hole in the ground there. This looks like a, a help. Yeah, no way. Oh, no shit! Are you kidding me? Look at this! No, take a look at this. No. Holy shit. Yeah. Don't even have anything on yeah. the stairs. Dude. Yeah. No, no, Adam. Becca. That's just dangerous. look. Okay, yeah. Let's Holy wire this shit up. I'm gonna do my quarantine down here. You got to, man. Yeah. Put your mask on. Starting. Put your mask on or I'm not telling you anything. You're breaking up. I, it's too low down here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mask. <laughs> you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, and so the hooded man, of course, came to talk to you. Of course he is. You've been trying to make a deal with him, too. He's creeped out, actually. Is everyone at base right now? Mask. Yes. Say yes. Say yes. Yes, we are. Holy shit. Loud as day upstairs. Sound like three footsteps and dragging. Who's up there? The victim, the one who was shot, is there. That's our boy. It's one of them. I feel bad that you got shot outside on the front. Can you talk to us right here on these three, these two boxes out here? That's how I can hear you. Can you talk right there? Can you talk to us right here on these three, these two boxes out here? That's how I can hear you. Can you talk right there? Too, so There's something crawling here. on the wall. <clears throat> right up the wall. Dude, seriously, everybody's accounted for, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Holy shit. I hear you right at the top. Can you just walk to the top of the steps? I'll be able to see you on my camera. Just walk to the top. He's being watched by something that just wants to mess with him. He must have made a... I want to know what deal he made this time. There's like... I can't tell if there's a figure at the top of the steps. I can't tell. It's completely dark up there. Do you want Goose to do a security sweep? No! No! I just want to, I want to know who's dead. There is somebody moving at the top of these stairs to this boiler room. There is somebody moving at the top of these stairs to this boiler room. Something bad's going on behind him. Something like sinister just walked in. Nobody's keeping track of time. What? I forgot about time. Something really sinister just walked in. Just tell me who you are. Just talk down here. Talk down to these boxes that I have. Talk down here. Talk down to these boxes that I have. Adam, it's a reaper. All right. You're the Reaper! You were almost mine. Oh, that's creepy. Oh. He is behind you. He just said you were almost mine and your time changed.
You're breaking up. I heard static. Can you say that again? He is behind you. He said you were almost mine. Your time changed. He am not allowed to talk to the, these. Not... Oh, you just stopped. I lost it. It died. I'm not allowed to tell him. Or well, you tell him because I can't touch it. The battery's about to die. He's right behind you. He said. You are almost mine. God. So you're, he's, yeah. we're not allowed to tell him. Yeah. What? I can't tell you. Listen, Reaper, I've had things come after me before. I've been told. I've had demons. Demons come after me. I'm not impressed. If you're going to impress me, I need your voice. Talk. You should fear me, but you don't. He's touching him. He just grabbed his wrist. Holy shit! A brick just collapsed in this room over here. Holy shit! I know we caught that on the camera's audio over there. Holy shit. Right over in that, that, that room. He's done. The Reaper's really kind of... He's delivered his, like... He's still there. He's just not as active. He's not, right. like, showing his... And it's almost like Adam can feel it, kind of. You ready to end it, or you want more? It stopped. It's really weird. I feel like it, it got really cold down here, but everything just stopped. Rebecca called it on cue, then. Wow. It just, like, it got really cold, but I just... I feel low right now. Yeah, you said he was done. He did. He was done. Yeah, she called it. Said he said his piece, and he left. Glad we could work together. All right, yeah, we can call it. Earlier in the morning, I walked alone through these halls and I said, whoever's the baddest mother here, come forward and I'll give you the spotlight. And now with this new entity answering the call, we'd race upstairs to an area just outside the balcony room for a quick active EVP. Real quick, we've heard you all night. It's getting crazy. It's getting ramped up around here. Quickly. Tell me, just talk to us right now. Something happened to Pandora. Yeah, something's around. It's recording, it took a while. All right, I don't know if you're messing with our equipment. Talk to us. Ending EVP? Are you okay? Talk. What's, what is it? Here, right now, into the audio, back into the audio. Hold her up, Thanks. hold her up. Playing, playing back. Crap. It mocked you. I need to hold this. Yeah, here. Here. Got it. Hold her for a second, okay? Got it? Yeah. Oh, oh sorry. She's going right. her hands. We gotta go. All right, let's get out of here. Let's. We're gonna just. We're gonna regroup for a second. Let's set up for a ripple. Let's take a. Let's take a, a quick break. All right. Yeah. Yes. Ripple here though. Let's do it. Okay. Keep recording. Shut off. Keep recording. I'll keep recording. Keep recording. Keep recording. I'll keep recording. Keep recording. Keep recording. Keep recording. Keep recording. Please knock the f off. 
we quickly regroup back at base and round everyone up for another ripple. While downstairs, we listened again to the EVP captured and figured out that someone was targeting Rebecca. With this new knowledge and temperature dropping closer to below zero, we'd cut this all-white funeral a little shorter than usual. With 12 minutes on the clock and two Pandoras running, let's see if they still believe in equality. We are gathered here today at the House of Wills to remember someone that meant a lot to us. This individual has touched all of us in one way or another. Has touched all of us in one way or another. He died way too young. He was taken from us in a very terrible and unimaginable way, just outside on our front porch. He was shot in the head by a gang member. He didn't deserve to die like this. He was no gang member. But that's what I guess happens in this world. It is absolutely a terrible world. I think we have someone who'd like to bring something forward. Uh, one of the last gifts we can give our friend Chris. Thank you. I know it's hard. It's going to be very hard. We're all going to miss him. I guess all we can do is close out in a prayer. So if you can follow with me, we'll close out on a, uh, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Amen. Every time I glanced, it didn't seem like we were getting much. Oh, uh, there? Yeah. Anything interesting or? Um, yeah, a couple things. Uh, this creepy, like, more mystical figure talking about you, he says he doesn't know it's the beginning. There is a voice. I'm not seeing things as much today as I usually do. There's kind of a fog. There's a voice that said, the dead are sleeping here let them sleep. That same kid that I saw earlier, um, I, see, I heard his voice say, hey, but I couldn't locate him. And I was like, well, where are you? And he said, I don't want you to see me. And I said, well, why not? He said, I don't want to scare you. I didn't know you could see me. I'm sorry. All right. Chris, see if we can get you out. <laughs> With our generator's fuel level dangerously low, our electricity and heat were on the verge of shutting off. So we'd immediately head down to the massive Gratian auto room and set Chris up for the night's final quarantine. I am chilled from head to toe. Holy shit. Pandora's running live for Chris's quarantine. Pandora's running live. All right, buddy, 20 minutes, go kill him. Oh, shit. Well, you just seen that. The light just went out up there. Oh, shit. Hello? Who's behind him? 
He's alone out there. Oh my god. Oh my f***ing god. I just seen a shadow rope. Hello? Hello? It's the Reaper again. Right out of the corner of my eye. Shadow popped up and down twice. Right here, right in that corner. I am chilled from head to toe. Tell me, John, why did you kill yourself here? Why did you die here? Tell me, John, why did you kill yourself here? Why did you die here? <laughs> Was this place a German social club? Was this place a German social club? It's also been rumored that Martin Luther King Jr. and his wife came through here. Is that true? Ooh, there's something in the doorway. Pan back over to the right, Chris, right there. <laughs> well, there isn't. I'm seeing shadows come through there, down that hallway. Tell me what the cop did to your son in that mall. What did he do to your son? Oh god, something did not like that. I don't know what that was, but my entire body just got filled with like a weird prickly energy. Like an emotion of not oh ow. Holy shit. Holy shit. Hello? Good friend Adam Kimball was Whoa, I've seen something shoot. Was down in the boiler room earlier. I think the Reaper was down there. Is that true? If you want to set any records straight, you can do that now. We can hear you. Is there anything you'd like to say? Is there anything you'd like to say? Something's trying to possess Chris. Literally something is trying to step into him. Shit, I'm chilled from head to toe. There's something ghosted over him and I don't know if he can feel it. I can't tell what it is, so I don't know if it's safe or not. Somebody keeps trying to step into him. I don't, I don't think it's human. All right, here's what I'm gonna do. Holy Jesus Christ. Holy Christ. I just seen a shadow figure walk all the way across that wall just now, right behind that camera. Oh my God. It took him a minute to decide if it was human or not. Like you actually. Did, you can see him contemplating, <laughs> trying to understand. Hello? Is that you, Adam?
Holy Jesus Christ. It was quiet for a while. I kept hearing footsteps, like, you know, all the way 360 degrees. Kept hearing them all around me. Kept hearing stuff in every corner. And then I was going to say, I've talked a lot. I'll give you, yeah. you know, the floor to talk. And plain as day, I've seen probably six foot tall shadow figure. I've seen just a head and shoulders and down move behind that camera across the wall. I don't know. We just, she just like, she just kind of breaks she's like collapsed right here. here. Okay. Can you talk? No, I'm okay. I'm not hurting. I'm not. <clears throat> this got weak. Oh. You got to talk. You got to use words. Okay. Hang on. She's something happened to her. Very susceptible to stuff trying to jump into me. It's not Let's physical. I'm fine. Let's get her out of this Let's room. Get her out of this room. Yeah, out of this room. Yeah, out of this room. Here we go. What's here? What? 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 So what do we do? What do we do? Do we have any? I want to get her out of the building. We gotta get her out of the building. Get her out of the building. Here, just grab her. Go. Oh. Do we have a light? Somebody? Here, just I know where we're going. Be careful of the cords. Right. Once we removed Becca from the building, she immediately snapped out of this attack. The warning signs leading up to this were around us all night, but I didn't realize the severity until it was too late. I was too busy focusing hunting down the Reaper that I didn't realize I was putting her into jeopardy as the night progressed. While we were frantically trying to help her, I forgot to shut off the Pandoras which were placed on the pews. One final EVP of the night would be captured following her screams. After 17 hours inside the House of Wills, our investigation is complete, and it will without a doubt go down as one of our most memorable. For more episodes, visit ResidentUndead.com, and make sure you follow the entire team on Twitter.